Hi guys. So today I'm driving the uh, Toyota Corolla. And you know, the thing is, whether or not you are a car enthusiast, the Corolla name really needs no further introduction. This is, uh, well, Toyota's most recognizable, most iconic nameplate. In many ways, the Corolla is the embodiment of Toyota's values as a brand, Toyota's identity as a brand. And it is, I think, definitely Toyota's best-selling model of all time. Since, uh, apparently according to Wikipedia, since 1965, Toyota has sold 44 million units of this thing worldwide. So the thing is, when it doesn't matter your demographic or your social standing, whether you rich, poor, male, female, chances are at, at some point in time, your life would have been touched by a Corolla to some degree or another. I mean, it could be your own car. It could be your parents' car, your grandparents' car, your uncle, auntie's car, um, maybe your manager's car, your your staff's car, somebody in your life would definitely have driven a Corolla, maybe has even offered you a ride. And you know, it's part of your fab the, the fabric of your life. Me personally, I too have a very strong affiliation with the Corolla name. When I was a kid, uh, my my family had a Corolla KE70, which we, which we kept with us uh, until I was four years old. Right, it was after my brother was born in 1987. The following year, my father decided to trade the KE70 in for a Proton Saga. Okay, the KE70 at that time was a 1.3, and my father said he wanted to upsize to a 1.5. That was where the Saga came in. And I think I've t I I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. Now. At that time, right, um, a f a, fam a a relative of ours came over to visit. Okay, a very rich relative, okay, well, quite well to do, runs a bus company in Kuantan. Um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, he was talking to my grandparents and my, my grandmother just said, you know, telling, telling him that, hey, we are selling this car. And he just asked, oh, really? How much are you selling? Then my father said, oh, we are asking for 8,000 ringgit. And this gentleman just took out 8,000 ringgit. This is 1988. He took out 8,000 ringgit from his pocket. Nah, come, take the money. I'll buy your car right now. And the car was sold. And I cried. Yeah, at that time, when I, at that time, when when my when my uh, when the relative came back a few, you know, I think maybe a few weeks later or whatever to collect the car and drove it off, I really really cried because because I had a genuine affection for that car for the car at that time so I remember one of the things that I always did with the car right was that I would always ask my my parents or my grandparents to to let me to, to just let me sit or stand inside the car all right when the car was in the car porch and I would just hold the steering and I pretend to drive and all of course, I didn't. I didn't know heads or tails, lah. What's 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 in the car, right? I didn't know how. I, I didn't know how to operate the gear stick and all that. But I think that was the car that sort of sparked that the the love of cars in me. <clears throat> and I distinctly remember the Corolla KE70 at that time had an analog clock in the instrument cluster, and maybe it's because of that I have a special liking. Whenever I see a car with an analog clock inside it. And, and so that's my story with the Corolla. So in today's video, um, I will be speaking to a couple of friends who each are Corolla owners, present Corolla owners, and uh, we'll hear their story with their current cars. What we have here today, next to the current Corolla, the AE92 generation Corolla, 
and right there with me is the owner, Derek. Hello. So I flipped the camera, bro. So Derek here, uh, he has been watching too much of Crispy's video. <laughs> all right. And uh, he got influenced to buy this Corolla AE92. Bro, tell us the story. How did you end up with this car? This is my first car. It's a Mazda 626 yeah. 1991. Mm -hmm. That's a 2-litre manual. And two years ago, I sold that car. Then I kind of missed driving a manual car. And I was like, damn, I missed it. Then I decided to recently, lately, few few months ago, I watched uh, Chris's Chris Wee's videos, mm -hmm. to trying to think which would be suitable as my next week, my weekend car. Mm -hmm. So and I watch and watch and watch. Uh, suddenly, I, I came across this car or one of his vid uh, vid earlier videos. Mm -hmm. So this car really like caught my attention. I told myself, you know what, I'm gonna go for this Corolla SE A92. I told myself it has to be a 1.6 manual. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go for it, man, and just do it up slowly. Mechanically, and I got it painted as well. But the freshness of the paint is obvious, it's very, very obvious. Uh, so, can you please take us through some of the interesting parts of this car, bro? It's originally, when I bought this car, the lights were all completely faded. The lights were faded, the lights were faded very badly, and yep. then I got a new tail lights mm -hmm. just to make the car much nicer, more yep. gentle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then. Um, and, oh, and another thing I want to show you is uh, those rims actually belong to uh, Chris's previous uh, Chris's previous Corolla. Ah, SE. this was from Chris V's previous car, all right. Yes, it was from his previous uh, Corolla SE. Mm -hmm. Then when I was doing up this car at uh, at Kenzone, mm -hmm. then Chris had, Chris had actually messaged me and asked me, "Hey, yo, Derek, uh, you interested to get those rims? They were from my Corolla last time." Mm -hmm. Then I was like, "Oh, I was like, okay, uh, I'll just uh, grab it then." Put it on my car. Mm, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But previously it was silver. Now it is uh, been refurbished, refurbished in black. Ah. Yeah, okay. Zone. Okay. Okay. Yep. Wow. This area. This old school area. My God. My God. The one, this the one. This one can uh, pull one. Uh, uh, yeah, can pull one. But sometimes. Uh, okay. But yeah. Yeah. Because the mechanism has aged, so you don't want to do it. But yeah, I remember those days. You know, this antenna, uh, the, the A pillar mounted antenna. This was a very popular thing back then. Yeah. Right. Yep, and then I'm going to show you the uh, interior. Yep. Yep, when I got the car, the interior was like this. Basically. Oh, hey, it has held up very, very well. Yeah, for 30 years old. 40, yeah, been. yeah. Okay, I mean, of course, there there are signs of wear and obvious wear and tear, yep. but the dashboard still looks solid. It drives really well, and mm. I'd like to show you the uh, the the engine. All right, and this is the 1.6 uh, four four AFE engine. Four AFE, yes, yes. Yep. Yep, and it's uh, powered to a, a 1.6 manual, and of course they have a 1.3 uh, SE as well. Actually, most of the most of the Corollas of this generation were what, a 1.6 or 1.3? Uh? Uh, they have the 1.3 also. Yep. Yep. And another interesting fact is, that with this uh, Corolla SE A92, mm. uh, how to tell is a A92 1.6 SE is this grill. Yeah. So so this is a one point. This is a one point six grill. Yeah, one point six version. Yes, there was an auto version of uh, this as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it was a uh, four speed automatic. Ah. Yeah. Hey, but at that time, at the era of this car, four speed auto was a big thing. Obviously, redone up engine bay, so it's yep. in very very good condition. No leaks. Yep. Yep. No no leaks at all. Sorry. Sixteen volt single cam. Ah. Yes, correct. Du du dual cam. Uh, twin twin cam. cam. Twin cam. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. Twin cam, man. Oh, nice, very, very nice. So the AE92, right? Uh, this, when it was launched, this was a major quantum leap from the previous Gen 8, the AE80 series Corolla. Okay, uh, I mean, it had it, it brought the power up to a 1.6 liter engine, 16 valve, still carburetor, all right, but you also have the option of a four speed automatic transmission. Okay, the interior of this car, as you can see, is a is significantly modernized if you compare it with the Corollas that come before. So this is very obviously a uh, a car that was built for the 1990s. Today, you know, today as uh, in in the 21st century, we may see this car as old, but in this day, I assure you, this car was really top of the line. And you know, you here here you have power power uh, adjusting door mirrors you've got all-round power windows this car has power steering as well 
complete radio system here so this is a very very uh advanced car for its time and styling wise i i, I think this this version of the Corolla has aged really, really well over the years. Okay, still to today, it still looks quite contemporary. Uh, my favorite Corolla is, of course, the uh, AE101, to be honest. But this one here ranks, um, I would say, maybe third or fourth in the line because I, I, I have a I have a special place in my heart for the uh, the Corolla KE70, of course. Okay, so this is your car. Yep. And I have brought the new Corolla there for you to check out. Okay. So Here's an offer I want to make. Are you ready to trade cars? <laughs> uh, not sure yet, man. But I would, I would of course love to try driving it, what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are now settled into Derek's Corolla. And first impressions that I get, I'm sitting a lot closer to the ground than the new one over there. Okay, every manual car is different. Yep. So I've got to get you adjust to the clutch bike point. Very nice. Oh my god, the steering has a, a, a certain um, smoothness to it. There is, I, I feel a very pleasant kind of feedback from the steering wheel. And just going over that rut, uh, the the suspension has has a wow. Well, okay, the clutch has a bit of free play, but the suspension it feels to be in very good shape. And oh, the engine is. The, oh my God! There's just so much sensations coming, th coming, coming to us. All right. The, the the suspension is taut. The word for the suspension is taut. T a u t. It's so lively. The engine. All right. Wow! This thing can corner, man. Well, yeah, ground corners. Yeah. yeah, and such good torque from down low. But, but once it's at fifth gear, it, it really keeps going on the highway. Yeah. This car, nice, very, very nice. Yeah, there's that liveliness to this engine that even though it's not very fast, okay, but you it, it feels like you know it's a nice engine to work. It's it, this is a, a a rare feeling in cars whereby it just feels that everything in this car is you know is well screwed together. It feels like you know even though after this this car is like what 20 30 years old, you can still feel the effort of the engineers you know that they put in to fine tune this car. All right. So now let's hand you the keys to the new one. All right. So smooth. So smooth, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the steering feel. But do you feel immediately taller? Yes, definitely. Yes, right. definitely. I definitely feel a lot taller. Higher off the ground? Yes, definitely. Uh, unlike the, the my Corolla, it's like so so. Yeah, cool. your your Corolla, you are practically sitting on the ground, you know. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, and here I'm like I'm like sitting in a much taller position, right. so much higher. Right. And coming from your car to this one, you feel a bit more isolated from what's going on outside. Uh, yep. Right? Yep, There's right. a greater sense of isolation. Uh, uh, you, you, may, you may say of refinement. This hooks up, bumps really well. Oh, the suspension setup on this car, I think, to me, is fantastic. I think this is the definitely the segment's class leader, there or thereabouts, when it comes to, you know, uh, ride and handling it doesn't feel like a c-segment car really it, yeah, feels, yeah, it yeah. feels like a d-segment yeah how do you feel this car compares to yours definitely the the corolla is really like all grown up yeah yeah while the a92 felt like it felt like you're, you're like a boy racer kind of car it's like yeah. you want to have fun yeah 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 like, yeah. like, like you want to be a bad boy going out yeah, yeah. and this but this one is like 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 a real fam like real family car yeah yeah, I mean it's like it's like you want to go hopping with your family, go for a long road trips. But, hey, is but this one you can you can boy racer a bit. This car, you know, yeah. you know that time I a few months ago I took this car up Genting, right? Yeah. The way the rear sits on sits up as you corner, right? Wow, I was mm. blown away by the handling of this car. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I, I think I saw one of your videos as well, mm. as well as uh, Chris and Bing's video as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I'm really impressed how uh, Chris was going up. Gunting. Oh yes, yes, yes. I'm really I impressed. Think the, the handling of this car really is a strong point, and I, I it, it kind of ties in very nicely also with the strengths of the 
AE, AE92, the AE101, uh, and of course the legendary AE86, whereby Toyota was able to offer a car that first and foremost offers reliability, but more importantly also actually delivers a healthy dose of driving fun. Indeed, this car it feels really fun, not really far from the A92, but it still has that fun feeling in there. It's, uh, it's, but it's, it's more grown up. La. It's, yeah. it, 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 it's not as analog as your AE92. Yeah, it goes well in ground corners as well. Very well, well, very well. Yeah, really good handling, yeah. Okay, guys, so there you have it. Derek had a ta his time uh, trying out the new, the all new Corolla. All right. So next up, I'll be meeting another friend who has not one, but two Corollas to his name. Yeah. Okay guys, so with me here, this is a good friend of mine, Go. He and I go back a long way. He's my senior in high school. And today, he is a Waja owner like me. He's an E39 owner like me. But unlike me, he has two other cars. So these two Corollas belong to him and thanks bro, thanks for bringing, bringing them out to line up next to the new one. Hey, so tell me the story about, about your past. So this was, so this is the, what model is this really? The A AE80. This is the AE80. 1.3, 8 volts. Hey, this, this one, this one not 12 volt ready. I remember this was 12 volt. There no? was a facelift version, uh, ah. 12 volt. Uh-huh. So uh, this one was the pre-facelift. Oh, okay. So the this, but this was the first front-wheel drive Corolla. Correct. This was the first front-wheel drive Corolla, and oh, but I thought they were twelve valve. It started with eight, okay. eight, eight valve. Uh -huh. Then they did a facelift with the twelve valve. Ah. Then the AE ninety came out with continued twelve ah, and sixteen. Ah. Okay, okay. 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 So this car was your my dad's car. Oh, so this... uh, he got it when I was just a toddler. Wow! So, so he bought now, brand new? Uh? He bought brand new. It was about 22k back then. Wow! That's what he told me. 22k brand new. Yep. And and you guys have kept it in the family? Yep, correct. So it went through my dad, uh -huh. then my sister, uh -huh. and me. Wow. Until now, la, I uh. decided to still continue to keep it. Hey, but this is not the original colour, right? I don't remember them coming in these colours. Yeah, so once I got my first job, uh -huh. Uh, as a fresh grad, what I did was I did a pop overhaul on the engine. Wow. Then two years later, got enough money again, sprayed to the color that I liked. Ah. That time. So it was uh, original was white. Then uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The rims also. Actually, quite common. White is a, the most common color. White, yeah, with the black bumpers. Wow. <laughs> oh, so you 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 painted over the bumpers, yeah, 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 I did a. Uh, these are the new. These are the Vios, Vios rims. <laughs> Vios fourteen inch. Ah. Okay la, because Okay la. Was that it was having the steel bursy, the ah, bursy ribs? Yeah. Okay, okay. Hey, come. Let's show. Let's check out this car. Hey, yours also got the the A pillar mounted antenna. Yeah, original. It was actually uh just a antenna. Yeah. Without just the casing here. Ah. Without the antenna. So, so you we you tamba a, one. We did a upgrade. It ah. was not an option uh -huh. back then to add a radio. Oh, so so I had the set earlier. Uh -huh. After that, when I was working also, I changed it to a CD player. Uh, wow, this and this one really is old school, man. This is re hey. So the the the, the car the radio obviously didn't come with the car, but the car didn't have a radio at all to start with, uh. Correct. It didn't have a radio. Uh -huh. It didn't have a left side mirrors also. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the left side mirror, how? You, you took from Chop Shop or what? La? I took from, uh, it's a Taiwan uh, ah. OEM. Ah, okay, okay. okay we okay. added in la later. Ah. Yep. Oh my god. Still got AM. Yeah. What were, what, what were these things called already? Uh? The membership number, I think. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So, so this is the door, door yeah. open. Wow. The steering column, uh, it, uh, what you call it? Uh? Hazard light switch. Yeah. Phone. Hey, this on-off is what? Eh? For the radio, we retrofit it uh, oh. so that it doesn't lose uh, leak current. La. Oh, yep. oh my god. And wow! Wow, got, got, got beam uh, got instrument beam cluster beam. adjustment. Not yeah. bad. Yeah. Alright, so guys, check out this old school old school uh, instrument cluster. So what, man? So, 
so raw so raw this is a throwback to a totally and oh yeah i remember those days all right uh when my when my family we had a ke 70 right that time no central locking mark so you have to go do this to open the door right. to open the rear door i don't have uh, any uh remote also uh -huh. this original open with the key barrel wow. then uh these are the original seats still mm -hmm. from 80, 1984 uh -huh. i did a retrofit of a oem rear seat belts for oh. left and right passenger hey, wait so they have the points already oh so the, the, the is seat belt ready when the points are for, there for the lap oh yes. Uh, but I did not try here lah, the uh, uh, mm. C-pillars, I did mm. not try to check it out because open up maybe brittle and a lot of work so I did a retrofit myself yeah. for yeah. the kids lah Sendiri pasang one Sendiri DIY back then Well done, well done <laughs> For the kids yeah. Well kids. done, well done, okay okay so okay the kids also love the car lah, they say not to sell Ah, <laughs> okay okay So, nothing much here. Oh. Didn't upgrade anything Yeah Stock standard Ah. So over the years, pretty reliable. Yeah. Uh, just did a top overhaul. Mm -hmm. Then the brake booster was having issue earlier. Yep. Did a yep. Japanese half cut together with a clutch pump. Ah. Is a OEM. This one is a hydraulic clutch. Ah. Correct. Not bad, not bad. Mm. Got power steering? Or no. Oh, no power steering. Muscle training. Oh. Gym training. <laughs> but it's pretty light, lah, this car. Ah. Uh, in many ways, this was a groundbreaking Corolla because this was the first Corolla to use front-wheel drive. So right before that, the Corolla was always been rear-wheel drive. This was the first one to adopt front-wheel drive. But even more interestingly, this is a contemporary of the legendary AE86 that was rear-wheel drive. So imagine at that time, Toyota had a front-wheel drive Corolla, all right, and a rear-wheel drive Corolla, but after this generation, when they move on to the AE90, uh, it, it, it was when it switched all to, to front-wheel drive. Now, the AE90 was a very modern car as we saw earlier in the video. This one still has that old-school feel to it, but um, you can see that this was a car that, puts the, that put the Corolla on the path towards modernization. Okay, so from this, we now move on to this. This is the first Corolla to wear the Altis name on its badge, okay? And uh, it signified a move to reposition this Cor the Corolla name to a more upmarket standing, okay? So, um, there's a conscious effort to make the Corolla a bit more luxurious than before, all right? And uh, I think this was the first Corolla that went past the 100k price point. And remember that time when they first launched this, they debuted VVTi, they debuted VSC, Vehicle Stability Control. So, what led you to buy this car? Oh, okay. This is actually my wife's car. Uh -huh. We got it used from uh -huh. Top Mark about 2008, 2009. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we have it since then. This is what year one are this car? This is the first batch. Uh, actually, if you check inside, it, there's even Thai wording. So wow. it should be the first batch uh, that came into Malaysia. Hey, so your years of owning this car, how's the experience? Reliable. Reliable, ah. Reliable, ah. Uh, uh, compared to your BMW. <laughs> <laughs> Part of ownership experience. <laughs> okay. Hey, shall we check out the inside of the car? Let's go. Yeah. So this comes with the remote already. Okay. So you have the Cobra. Wow. Already. Okay. Okay. I remember this. Yep. Right. So not locked. So we go. We come inside and see. Right. You see how the way not how much more refined this what this is. All right. The this is obvious. You know, with all the the beige interior scheme and wow, this car has seen some use. Ah. Yes. Correct. It's about three hundred thousand now. Three hundred thousand kilometers. Ah. Yep. Okay lah. Okay lah. It's seen some use and. Uh, but you see, right, despite the wear, some of the signs of wear, right, I think the cabin is still holding together. Yep. For rattles, ah? Uh, uh, no move. rattles, already uh, fixed all the suspension, was having mm. some issues earlier, then, mm. so we fixed it. Mm -hmm. But the uh, cabin is good. Yeah. So these are semi leather. Yeah. Came with the car as an option, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a 1.6. This one. It is a 1.6. So I don't think it has a VSC. And traction control. Oh, what we have seen would have been for. We have seen would have been for the 1.8, yep. but this one you still you see here. This is a much more modern instrument cluster with the uh, 
you know with the gear gear a gear selector indicator digital uh, odometer all right uh four speed automatic transmission overdrive off switch and also uh mode select this is this is this is mode drive mode selection in those days lah power or normal driving mode all right so this one here sees the corolla take on a, this model actually sees the corolla take on a much more much more modern much more luxury oriented positioning than its, than its predecessors and they continue that with the successor to this one and the next one after that and eventually we arrive at this one okay hey, what's this uh, parking light one uh? uh this is for the rear rear demister uh -huh. this one this one this, this one is i I changed the meter before, so oh. it came with extra this switch. Oh. So I retrofit it to a real boot lamp. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. You make it, uh, but it didn't come from the factory lah. Factory is dead button. Cannot push down. Hey, what so. is this one, two, three, four? Don't touch alarm. Oh. Back then, I kind of like forget the passcode. Ah. But I remember, I know how to go around it. Just disconnect the battery. <laughs> okay. Hey, so this my odometer genuine one? Uh? Uh, changed already before, oh. so the real reading should be about 370k. Uh. Quite low for 84 car. Hey, your E39 also is about 300 plus k, right? Three, 330 now, 330k. Uh. So it's, E39 is catching up with this car in terms of mileage. Uh. But the condition of the E39 is much, much better. But do you still use this car often? Uh, used to have to be daily. Uh -huh. Uh, from day one uh -huh. until about 2010 uh -huh. where my dad get another car automatic uh -huh. Uh -huh. then uh, the avio uh, yes correct the avio then we uh, this car become like a spare car to uh -huh. us already uh -huh. subsequently then we got the altis uh -huh. we got the 39 uh -huh. and the waja uh -huh. so thank thankfully malaysia we can own so many cars yeah man Hey, 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 this car is still holding together so nicely. All the controls feel very crisp. Eh? Thank you, thank you. Wow. We have all the service records from the okay. also. So the the visual, the aesthetics of this car may not be pristine, but you know the everything still feels. Thank you. Oh, sorry, yeah. No problem. All right. It's a dead end, so you can go straight. Then you yeah. turn back. No yeah. problem. Yeah, everything still f there's a, that sense of uh, of crispness to it. Like, you know, this car is it has a well oiled feeling. Uh. Yes, right. It still can rev, but of course, uh, on trunk roads it's still good. Uh -huh. Good for trunk roads, but once you hit the highway, uh -huh. doing more than hundred, then you right. can hear the engine is protesting. Uh, of course, because this car is maybe about seventy horsepower and new. Uh -huh. So now it's my a few body. horses left the barn ready lah. Uh -huh. uh. Many, I think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but okay, what? Well, I, yeah. I, I mean, for for as a day-to-day -day car, it's not bad. And honestly, this is the first time I drive a car without power steering, and I don't feel intimidated by it. Yeah, it's pretty light. The steering is pretty. Yeah, light. I, I remember a few years ago, I drove my friend's Iswara without power steering. I was like, "What? Hello? How do you drive this car, man?" Oh, nice, eh? Nice, eh? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's nice. It's very pleasant. This car is very pleasant. It has a well taken care feel to it. It's part of the the journey that we went through lah. From uh, we struggled to buy this car, yeah. then where yeah. are we today? Yeah. It, it brings the memories, uh, the challenges, everything that you, we went through. Great, so sad to sell this car. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see how long I can keep it. Okay, so now we go into your Altis. Wow, suddenly, suddenly so much more modern, man. <laughs> I was actually, you know, you know, just now I was reaching the side here. I was actually looking for the seat adjustment. <laughs> Power windows have been from new, huh? Yeah. Uh, yep. We have not replaced it before. Very reliable, except for the central locking. Uh huh. Oh, uh, this car also you clocked three hundred mm -hmm. clicks already. Yep. But when you bought it, that time was how about, many? About hundred plus. Oh, okay So we done about two hundred on this one. Oh. Oh my god, 300,000 clicks and the engine is so quiet eh? Yeah, this is a level up. Have you like did any, I don't know, uh, change the engine mountings or? Yes, uh, part of uh, maintaining an old car. Yeah. I've done the suspensions and systems, mm -hmm. uh, engine mountings. Yeah. Uh, this one was consuming a bit of uh, 
uh, engine oil, so it did a top. I thought that's a BMW thing. <laughs> no. But there's a bit of pulling of the steering, but I'm mm. just so amazed at the at the smoothness of the engine and the ride is still still very plush. So smooth, and even the gearbox is still shifting nicely. This is yes. the original gearbox. Ah? This is the original gearbox. Uh, a bit of um, issue earlier this year uh. before MCO whereby uh. we have put in the engine treatment, uh, uh. the gearbox treatment. Uh. Uh, surprisingly, it worked. Uh. So the delay of shifting from uh, during cold start from to D is resolved la, for now. Oh, okay. So I might be looking at a gearbox rebuild uh, somewhere later oh. in the future. There's a bit of... Uh, Clunking la, I would say. Uh, yeah, but quite quite smooth But, la, but uh, we have done many long road trips with this one yeah. to Perlis, to Singapore with this car. Yeah. Perlis no is issue. your your in-laws place, right? Correct. Yeah. So so, it, so you regularly go to drive all the way. Correct. Well, you see the the the, the pickup is still smooth, right? Gearbox still shifts smoothly, and hey, amazing man! The amount considering the amount of miles this car has put in, this car feels barely. Uh, older than a hundred thousand kilometers. I think. I think one thing you <laughs> jump from Waja to this immediately. The refinement is so much better. Much, much better. This is a <laughs> so step much closer to Conti car. Yeah. Uh, really good engineering by Japanese. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Man. So quiet. Very quiet. And, this and no rattles. You see, just now, I'm sure, guys, you've seen earlier in the video. There's a lot of wear in the. <laughs> our friend has been very. Uh, use this car very well. There are a lot of wear yeah. around uh, well uh, used. On, on the trims, but mechanically it's so solid, so solid, eh? Yes. Uh, my wife loves this car. Uh. Vouch not to touch any other cars other than Toyota oh, after wow. this car. Really? Yeah. Yep. They want to try the new one. Sure. Just go wherever you want, ah. It's okay. Okay. Uh. Don't think run. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Wow. If you can if you can cross border if you can cross the district border controls uh. <laughs> brand new car feeling. So will you be tempted to trade your one of your Altis in for this? Luckily my wife is not here. <laughs> if not then we will have a serious discussion <laughs> tonight I'm sure. <laughs> I kind of move over to BM so this is gonna be an eye opener again. Actually right, regardless of how much of a of a car enthusiast you are it's it's nice to have something you can always fall back on always count on correct right to be reliable ah, all the time yeah because all the cars in my stable are 20 and above yeah 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 yep. so it's kind you just, of you looking need, at something you need something newer. you need something to keep going while bank your life happens <laughs> <laughs> But I think I read up this was on a TNGA this platform. This is a TNGA platform. So, so uh, the handling, handling is, is, is damn chun. Yeah. Damn chun. The day I, last year I, I drove this up to Genting, right? The handling is 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 is, is tip top. And you know uh, you're familiar with Sunway Traction cutting that area? Uh, I think the old Motorola, is it? The yes. Motorola yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So there was this left turn there. The bend area is all the brick pavements. Okay. okay, very rough payment, and then after that, suddenly it's tarmac. Oh, okay, and to top it off, there's a bum one. Oops. So, as you <laughs> if you corner too fast, right, your front right wheel, which is where most of your car's weight is, hmm? will hit the bum. So, I took this car that day and I just fly over that one. It maintained control, you know, it didn't wow. lose control. Granted, I didn't switch the traction control off, but still, hmm. it, it didn't show signs of nervousness. It right. just like, boom, then just settle up and go. Wow. So, I think yeah. the, the platform and the suspension is really... Real double wishbones, eh? Yep. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when Toyota first announced the TNG platform, they said, real double wishbones, I want... Whoa, really? <laughs> uh, and one thing I like about car with independent suspension, when you corner, the rear is more stable. Actually, I think the AE80 also had independent rear suspension. It's the Altis that had the torsion wheel. Mm. Mm. But the Altis, for what it was, because they want to position it as a comfort-oriented car, right? Correct. I think based on my experience just now, it fulfilled that brief. Lah. It may not be the car of choice to to go on a toge run or whatever, but yeah. as, a, as a comfortable, reliable car, it fulfills the brief. Lah. 
Yeah, I think during the year 2000, I think it was a very, very good uh, it was, it was, vehicle to be. You yeah. can see it all over, everyone was yeah. very happy with it. Yeah. And, 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 but this one, I think they, they Toyota tried to inject a more sporty tone yes. to it. Right? Yeah. So you see like your car had beige interior, this one is all black. And the handling genuinely is like what, two or three steps up easily? Easily two, three steps up. Yeah. But surprisingly, refinement is your 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 old artist refinement. And this one is not far apart. Refinement. In terms of I the, think on in terms of trunk road still can compare, but maybe goes to highway. Uh, the because it's a this is just a one point six. Yeah. Uh, about yeah. one hundred and ten horsepower. Yeah. So and the gearbox is also only a uh, four, four speed. Yeah. So all this uh, will show out when you go on uh, yeah, highways. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's about knowing knowing yeah. the the. The, what you call it, what the car can and cannot do like. mm. correct okay and uh, speaking of banker life just now side just call me my E39 is done can give me a ride uh? <laughs> no problem can <laughs> as usual <laughs> yeah